They took away my gun. They took away my badge. They took away uh, every piece of photographic equipment I had. But honestly, I never looked back. When I heard the news of the bombing, I knew I just had to get to work. The days that followed were uh, much like the days after September 11th. Clearly things had, had changed. I became a police photographer when I was part of our crime scene unit, and one of the duties is to uh, use photography in everyday missions. The morning of the capture, I heard a report that a resident had found this guy in his boat in the backyard. So I jumped in my unmarked cruiser and I followed a couple tactical vehicles to the residence. It was very clear that this was a very active uh, situation. This was as real as it gets. We were also getting reports from our helicopter, and they were reporting that they saw movement in the boat. To see the uh, torn covering of the boat just floating in kind of a ghostly manner was actually quite haunting. We knew that this was an absolutely dangerous situation. We knew what he and his brother were capable of. I was proud to be part of the team that was able to say, we got him. This was the guy who had executed a police officer. This was the guy who set the bomb off at the finish line of the marathon on Patriot's Day. And this is the guy that caused the lockdown of the city, something that had never happened before. When the picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone came out, it angered me and it angered everyone in Boston. It was absolutely insulting. The picture showed him almost as a rock star. The image I remember of that guy was the one that was dejected in the boat in Watertown, the true face of terror. I knew that those images would bring closure to a very hurting city. I knew that the state police would never release those images. Very few people even knew these existed. It's an amazing image. It's as real as it gets. That's the terrorist. That's the guy who hurt Boston. It's not glamorous. This is what happens to terrorists. After hearing from one of the victims and knowing their feelings about the Rolling Stone cover, it was very clear that people needed to see the real images of the Boston bomber. I left Boston Magazine knowing that what I did was right. I knew there would be ramifications. I knew that the state police would have to do something. But honestly, that was never a consideration. After I was cleared by the psychiatrist, the state police said I was okay to go back to work. However, I knew I'd never be photographing again for the state police. I was removed from our media relations unit and I was put back onto patrol. I received an honorable discharge and I wrapped up my 25 years with the Massachusetts State Police. Sometimes, doing what's wrong is the right thing to do.